So it's fairly easy to just simply color an object in Blender, but what if we want to actually apply some images to the side of it to make it look a bit more realistic? Okay, we do that with a thing called UV mapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this wooden crate here. So I'm in Blender and I've just got the default cube up here. And what we need to do is we need to kind of get a standing knife along all these edges. Uh, not all of them, but some of them, just so that the whole thing can fold down flat. Um, and as if we had a cardboard box that we'd ripped open and we're just laying it down flat. So I'm going to come into edit mode and I'm going to start thinking about how I'm going to cut this up. So I'm thinking to myself, this side here perhaps needs to flop down. So I'm going to select edges down here and with control press down, select those three edges. Now, once I've got those, I can come over to um, tools over here and I can come down to the shading UVs tab down here. And I should then be able to click on here to mark the seam. You can see that's turned red. So we've isolated that as a seam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn my box around and I'm thinking probably need to do the same with the other end. So, um, left click, control press down, select those three edges, mark that as a seam. So that end will flop down. And then I think I will make that a seam there. And we'll see how that works out. So we'll mark a seam there. So in theory, the middle section should then unwrap. So with our red lines in place and we've told it where we want to cut, what we need to do is just unwrap it, unfold it all. So what we need to do is we know to select all so it turns orange. If it doesn't, just select all again. So the cube turns orange. Okay. And then over here, still on the shading UV options, we'll click on unwrap, unwrap. It looks like nothing has happened until we come down here and we change our window. So we're going to change it from the 3D view to the UV image editor. And you can see there's our box unwrapped. No, those are each of the sides of the box flattened out. So what we need to do now is we need to get this into Photoshop. And we do that by going into UVs and export UV layout. Ask us where to save it. I'm going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to call it um, Blender Cube. And you'll notice it saves it as a PNG file. And export the layout and for the time being we're finished in blender and i've swapped over to photoshop or whichever imaging software you prefer um i'm just going to go file and open and we're going to open that file that we just made blender cube and we can see the outline of the cube they're flattened out and we can actually paint anything we want on these now. I'm just going to open up the cube image that I've got from before, so the crate image from earlier on. Um, so I've opened that as a new image in Photoshop. Um, select all. Edit copy. Come into the Blender cube option. Edit paste. It's way too big. So I'm just going to and shift press down, resize it so it's roughly the size of one of these panels. There we go, and apply it. And then from that, I've got that as a layer now, so I can just in Photoshop. I'm not going to go through the details of using Photoshop, but if I click on layer one and drag it down to this paper symbol here where the hand is, it will make a copy of layer one, which can then be moved. And we can just keep going. So we just drag a new one down. Okay. And I'm not going to be too exact here. Now, these don't have to be the same things, of course. You could choose different graphics for each side of the box. 
and get as near as I can. Okay, got those in. And just to show the all different sides, I'm just going to pop another blank layer in here. And I'm going to get a brush. And I'm just going to label each side. So A, B, C, D, E. F. Of course, you wouldn't write the letters on unless you wanted to. This is just so you can see what's happening when we go back into Blender. So we've got all that. So what I'm going to do is layer, flatten image. And incidentally, if I did draw something over here in this white area, doesn't matter. That's all wasted space. So that will all just get cut, cut away and lost. So I'll just put that on for the sake of showing that I can put a mess in there. And file, save. So that's now saved back as Blender Cube PNG. So come out of Photoshop, go back to Blender. Okay, so we're back in Blender. I can swap back to 3D view. To get... So here we are back in Blender. Um, cube is just as we left it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to apply our surface to this cube. So we'll come up here to the materials option. If there isn't a material already in there, just click plus and then new. But I've got one, so I can work with that. I'm going to now move on to the textures option and textures tab, I should say, and type image or movie. Then I come down here to image and I open our image that we've just made. So Blender Cube, open image, and we should see it appear here on our preview panel. Now if we can't see it in the main window, what we need to do is come down here and change our viewport shading to rendered. And then we should see our image in some way, shape or form on the cube. Now all we need to do now is keep scrolling down here at the side. Okay, to mapping and we're just going to change that from generated to UV, which will make it all match up. And you see it's wrapped it all around the face. It's used the unwrapping that we used earlier as a guide as to where everything's going to go. And you can see that that's the black side is just that we've got no light on that side of that scene. So let's just come over here and in object mode. Put some light over there, see what that looks like now, see if it looks any better, a bit, a bit brighter. We can see all the separate um, panels are now done and you can do this with all sorts of objects. You need to be a bit more creative with some other than others. So if we went to file new, um, get rid of the cube, um, let's create a cylinder. Now what we would need to do with the cylinder is that's basically a tin of beans. We want to cut off the lid and we want to cut off the base underneath. So what we need to do is edit mode, select faces, deselect all, and then make our way around there as such. Okay, so we just Draw around there, and once we've drawn all the way around, then we'll come over here and mark that as a seam. And then what you would end up with is a UV map that looks a bit like that. Um, so there's the side of the tin, there's the two lids, and then you could go into Photoshop and you can map a, a soup label and a couple of lids onto it and make a three dimensional tin. And it really is just a case of getting more and more advanced with this and working out where you want to put your seams. So perhaps a more complex model like a head, what you would actually do is go around the back of the head and you would run the standing knife up over the head and across the forehead and get something along these sort of lines for the head. You can see where the eyes and mouth and ears are. So that's just literally cutting off the back of the head. Then you go into Photoshop, skin that up, put whatever 
faces and textures. You could, you know, superimpose a photograph of somebody's face on there, match it up, and then bring it back into Blender. And that's really the core of UV mapping. And the real skill is knowing where to put these cuts to unwrap the image in the first place. Okay, this is just a quick tutorial. It's kind of a follow on from the one we've just done in UV texturing. So I'm where we were in the um, in the previous tutorial. So I've got the box here that we made. Press F12. It puts the surface on it because it's been unwrapped and everything else. So basically, we're at where we were at the end of the other UV mapping tutorial. Now you'll notice at the top we're using Blender Render to render this so press f12 and that's what we get now what we really should be doing to get a much more realistic looking scene is going down to cycles render now the trouble is if we press cycles render now you see we've just got the cube we've lost the texture and that's because in cycles you need to map the image onto the cube in a different way than we did um, using blender render so let's just assume that we've got no texture on that. On my desktop, I've got that um, texture that we made, the UV map in Photoshop. And what we're just going to do is rewrap it around the object. So I come over here to the Materials tab. And you'll see there's a material on it already. So I'm going to click mine, so I'm in Edit Mode, just go to Object Mode. And then delete that so I've got no texture. And I go new. Okay, and it creates a texture for me. And if you come down here to where it says surface, you can choose the color. Then at the side, there's a little button. Click on that. And then we can come up here to image texture. Okay, and that gives us the option directly underneath it to open our file. So I'm just going to go to the desktop. Um, cube uh, with the sides, open the image, uh, okay, and then what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to come down to here to where it says vector and I'm going to change that to UV so it maps it to our unwrapped cube that we did in the previous tutorial. If we've got that, we're in, in cycles, don't forget to do this, press F12, and there we go, that's our texture back in using cycles rather than using Blender Render, and that should give us much more realistic rendering. 